Hi, I'm Killian, and I'm creating an animated cartoon in my spare time with zero budget, all by myself, as a one-man operation. Now you might think, wait, doesn't it normally take 30 to 40 people slaving away, drawing pictures all day, one or two years to create an animated cartoon? And you are right. Traditionally, creating animated cartoons is a lot of work and takes a lot of time, even with a large team. So why am I doing it all by myself if it's that much harder? And the answer is simple, I just don't have the budget to hire a large team. And the only thing I have is my dream, these two are healthy hands, an unhealthy imagination, and some cool software. Let's see if that's enough to create an animated cartoon. No, let's not make this one, let's make it a whole damn series. <laughs> I am not a professional animator. I don't know how it is done in the industry. So I had to figure out for myself how to do things in a way that works for me as a one-man production. And then I thought I could share my findings and my mistakes with others who also, like me, don't have a huge team and don't have a formal education in animation. In this vlogging series, I want to talk about what you need to create an animated cartoon series all by yourself with close to zero budget. First of all, you need a story. So one episode will be about writing a script, how to format a screenplay script, uh, what software is there to help you do that. And of course, how can you organize all your scripts together to form a coherent universe or at least a storyline that goes through a whole season, because that is also very complex. Another episode will talk about designs, so scenario, characters, props, architecture, and where to find inspiration, what art styles there are, and how that can have an impact on your animation production. Another episode I will talk about narration, which is particularly challenging for me because I'm not a native speaker of English, so having to do impressions in your non-native tongue and what kind of cheats there are to get around this and then, of course, talk about what software to record your narration, what hardware do you need, what mics, do you need a full-blown studio or not, and so on. Then I'll have an episode talking about animation, of course, that is the main thing that we're going to do. Uh, what techniques are there to animate, what software is there, again, on a budget, I'm not talking about the really expensive stuff. And other things I found creating animation that you might want to know to avoid double work and doing stuff three times, four times, five times, all over. Another episode, I'll talk about music. First of all, do you want to write your own music? If yes, what software do you want to use, especially if you're not a musician? And if you can't write your own music, you have to buy it or license it. And then there's the question of what licenses are there? What caveats are there with these licenses? And also audio, but not music, Foley. So all the sound effects that make your animation come alive, which are quite important, and where to get those. But in this episode, I'd like to talk about my motivations as a designer to create my own animation series and where I come from. I grew up in Germany, and I loved European comics by artists such as Franke, Uderzo, Marcel Gottlieb, Möbius, Francisco Ibanez, and Sergio Aragones. When I was little, I wanted to become a comic book artist, but found out that most people would have to learn French and go to France to have a career, so I gave up on that. Then I dabbled in movie making with an 8mm camera, where I built styrofoam spaceships and blew them up and shut them in slow motion to make it look like a real explosion. And then in my 20s, I got hooked on learning Japanese and moved to Tokyo. So my dream of making original content went dormant for a while. And it only awoke very shortly in my first job in Tokyo, where I did a small proof of concept for an animation done in Flash, in Flash 2.0 that is. So animation is a bit of an overstatement because there wasn't much movement going on at all. This was the birth of fungus and mold though, although they looked entirely different than now, and it was more like a concept of two dudes in space. Then I got into video production for five years, where I learned After Effects and Final Cut Pro from version 
And I made an animated TV commercial for Brastel, which aired on BBC and CNN in Asia. And the software I used back then was the version 2.0 of Moho. Now, Moho was an eye-opener because it was the first software to use inverse kinematics and bones to rig characters for 2D animation. That was unheard of. Even Toon Boom only had Toon Boom Studio back then. That was the uh, software they had. And that was basically no bones. Um, but it had a 2.5D camera. And it was an eye-opener for me because the first time I got the idea that, wow, maybe now you can do animations all by yourself without needing a whole team of animators slaving away for years to just put together an animated movie. Fast forward 15 years, I've got two sons now and my older son got into cinematography big time. We bought him a Z-cam cinema camera and all his enthusiasm he has for his hobby kind of spilled over to me and I got the movie making bug myself. So I thought in the middle of my midlife crisis, I'm 49 now, this might be the last chance for me to start something completely new from scratch. I couldn't go full in, I have a day job. So I knew I would have to do all of this between the job and the kids and not being able to stick to a fixed schedule, it was clear I would have to do all of this all by myself, at least for the time being. So the downside is that I don't know when the next episode will be out because it'll be done when it's done and I have no idea how long it'll take me to complete the first season. But once I'm there, I'm pretty certain that I will then get more serious about the whole thing. If I have a whole series, a whole season, I mean, together, I'll probably start more advertising and see whether I can get some, some real distribution deals. For now, it stays a fancy hobby and I'll be vlogging about it a little bit and post some snippets of my animation every now and then. But that's as far as it goes. So don't think I can tell you about how to make a lot of money with this because for now, with the pilot out now, all the money I made on this is, I think, about $7 because a few of my friends bought the video on Vimeo On Demand. So this is not about making money. This is about having fun and following your dream over and out.